Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange is targeting January 20th as the launch date for the country's first coal futures market. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Uh, thanks, Shannon. Can you tell us about the coal futures market, as well as the reasons why it would be a good tool for junior miners? Yes, so uh, the, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange has been going into derivatives uh, in the agricultural sector, you know, for maize and what they call grain. <laughs> and uh, so they have been active. They've got a platform there that is linked to the biggest um, uh, futures commodity traders in the world. Mm -hmm. So they've got that sort of formula. And then they've got the banks who, who cover any transactions. So that platform is, is already in place and it's, 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 it's functioning. Now they want to extend that to coal. We must have big consumers of coal in South Africa. I mean, 255 million tons a year that we produce and consume about three quarters of that. So we're huge consumers as well. But it's that exported portion that the, this market will really target. And it's not saying, look, we're the only ones that can give you, um, take away your price risk to, or mitigate your price risk because people forward sell at the moment. And if you forward sell, I mean, if you're a coal miner, you look to sell forward. Yes. And uh, so you you know what the price is going to be. You know who the buyer is. The difference here <coughs> is that this is not fixed. There's more flexibility. So you know you you don't know really who the um, buyer is because it's an exchange. Mm -hmm. But y you 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 get a deal, and if these price signals change, you've got options to change. So it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. But it also makes it a bit more risky. Well, you know, I think that uh, these markets are around risk mitigation uh, and, and trying to manage risk. Uh, that's largely why they're there. And one also has to look at the speculative element. And there has to be some sort of framework for the speculative element because it can get out of hand. Mm. And I think one of the checks and balances they've got here is that it's a physical market. There will be places where you can deliver the coal. There will be times when there won't just be a cash deal. It will be a, a physical deal where you take delivery of the coal or, or you place the coal at a delivery point. Mm -hmm. And so that is always the check and balance that they can call upon to make sure that the, the market stays honest. Mm -hmm. And to regulate it more. It gives it some sort of self-regulatory framework that you've got to physically um, deliver mm -hmm. if asked. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any danger of prominent players dictating market direction? How do you think that could be avoided? Yeah, this is what um, you know, they worry about, that, that a, a big player or a group of big players actually you know, have such a lot of muscle that they can actually dominate that market mm -hmm. to such an extent and it doesn't become a free market. It becomes a, a, almost a manipulated market. They've got to guard against that uh, by making sure that you know, the big players also will be called upon to deliver if they have to. And at the same time, try and get as many players as you can into the market. Try and get that liquidity across a broad front. Mm. And they're hoping that although they, they, they concentrate in the domestic market, because of the platform being uh, sort of a world-class platform coming in from, you know, the CMEs of the world in Chicago, etc., that they will also be able to attract transactors, you know, from India and from China in places like that who are still going to use a lot of coal and even though there's this um, climate change boogeyman around the place for coal a lot of these economies are just so committed to coal you know own included that you're going to have to live with coal and hope one day there's going to be a clean coal magic wand uh, waved which um, hopefully there will be but in the meantime this could give um, coal a, a new visibility it's a very important commodity. I don't think it gets enough visibility in South Africa. If you've got reports every day, and you know who's bidding, who's selling, and uh, what they're doing at what sort of uh, transaction rate, <coughs> it could be uh, something that's worthwhile. And as you mentioned in the beginning, the juniors, they're saying that the juniors could benefit a lot from this by getting some sort of price certainty. Because I'm a junior now, I've got coal in the ground. If it's December, I'm gonna take that coal out in July. I'm wondering what sort of price I know what my costs are going to be. You know, what sort of price am I going to get there? So I find a buyer, a willing buyer, who says, okay, I'll buy it at $110 a ton. And I look at my costs and I say, well, that gives me a, a margin. So it allows you to plan forward. 
And although these are relatively small, moderately sized uh, parcel lots of 500 ton a ton, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> that also facilitates the activities by the smaller groups. Mm -hmm. So they're opening the door to the bigger and smaller. Uh, and perhaps, um, you know, this could be something that, that we uh, w will benefit uh, the economy because uh, it will give a lot of visibility and transparency to this commodity, which we cannot do without. I mean, these lights are on yeah, because of this. Even our coal, uh, you know, is used for, for driving cars around in that the petrol is formed and, and getting airplanes in there. So I don't think any other country really uses coal to such a great extent as we do. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we should have had this market a long time ago. Uh, we have been slow on this because there's been a history of um, the previous government used to have agricultural control boards and they sort of set the pace. And the farmers loved these because there'd always be a floor price. Mm -hmm. And they knew, brother, they couldn't get less than that for their maize because that was the floor. Mm -hmm. And um, with options, you can sort of also develop a bit of a floor out of this. So you're giving people an opportunity of a little bit more foresight into you know, the future. Now, what effect, if any, could this have on the South African economy? <coughs> yeah, well, you think of the government now saying, hey, coal, strategic, we're going to yes. try and set the price. You know, That's at the one end of the domestic use. And we've always had this twin track arrangement in South Africa where people will mine coal with a, a twin view in mind. They know that Eskom's a hungry dragon, so that they can supply their low-grade uh, coal to Eskom and know that they're not going to get a huge amount of money for that. But the cherry is the export. And so that's what they always look to. And it's always been this dual policy. <coughs> now, this is really going to sweeten the export side. And if you sweeten the export side, there's less of a demand. For, uh, you, you're going to be less demanding on the domestic side because you know you're making your money in hard currencies. You know, on the export side, you can be a little bit more lenient. On the domestic side, you can be, um, your prices may be a little bit more conciliatory going into Eskom. And if uh, you know, there's such a lot of activity around coal and the demand builds up, there'll be more people wanting to get into this business. And if they sell forward, if you've got a new coal mine coming through and you sell forward, that also enables you to raise finance. Because you, know, you go along to the bank and you say, look, there's my coal mine. I've drilled the holes. That's the coal. We know it's in there. We know what the grade of coal is because we've done so much drilling. I need the money now to build this. Mm. <coughs> and you know why you should give me the money? Because I've got a guy over there on, on the futures market who's prepared to pay me uh, for the volume that I'm going to produce at a fixed sum that I know what it is. So on the basis of that, you know, you can advance me the, the, the funding that I need to get things going. And I think that in that way, it's going to capitalize some activity, particularly in the junior space, that will be important for the country. We know that Eskom is now pushing for black control. You know, they don't just want the 26%. They don't want, to be the, they don't want these uh, emerging miners to be co-pilots. Mm. They want them to be pilots, mm. you know, with 50 plus one or some sort of control. And if they can have a, a formula of funding, um, it's good. And this could be one of the ways of helping to fund those uh, emerging mines. Mm. Thank you for chatting to us, Mark. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world.